Welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. In the previous episode, we started to discuss the life and ideas of Władysław Słodnicki, a Polish publicist and politician who is famous for being one of the most outspoken proponents of an alliance between Poland and Nazi Germany before and during the Second World War. In this episode, we discuss his activities in the interwar era and at the time of the outbreak of World War II. He wrote a number of books uh, in, uh, in the 1920s and 30s, so he was quite a uh, prolific uh, writer. Uh, one of them uh, delved into the political systems of Europe. Uh, there he put forward a um, proposition that to counter the Soviet Union, uh, Poland should be, uh, together with Germany, a founding member of this uh, bloc of Central European nations. Uh, including uh, Poland, Germany, Austria, uh, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, even Greece and Yugoslavia. And he wrote that this block of uh, 200 million people or so uh, would be more than enough to uh, be able to fight off the Soviet Union uh, and to uh, create some kind of um, superpower on, on the, in continental Europe. Um, Leading up to, uh, in, in the late thir 30s, once it became apparent that uh, war was brewing in Europe, uh, initially he, uh, he supported Poland's uh, decision to uh, send in, tr in troops to uh, Czechoslovakia. Um, however, he opposed to um, Germany's treatment and continued occupation of the of entire Czechoslovakia. He thought that they could grab the Sudetenland and, and leave the rest alone. Uh, when they didn't, uh, then he wrote that uh, Germany's actions, they are creating uh, uh, bad emotions in Poland and uh, making Polish-German relationships uh, worse than it should have been. Uh, then, of course, uh, in April, um, the United Kingdom gave Poland um, a sense of security by issuing this communique that they would stand on Poland's side if there would be a conflict with, with Germany. Um, he thought that, Stadnitsky argued that th this was a very bad idea. He, he, he wrote that um, when, uh, when one is preparing to go to war on two fronts, uh, he first takes out the weaker uh, opponent. And in this case, we are Germany's weaker opponent. Uh, he argued that uh, these promises coming from the United Kingdom uh, only came because they wanted to divert Germany's attention uh, to strike against Poland first, uh, while uh, the United Kingdom would have time to build up uh, their own forces to prepare for the war. He also pointed out that uh, the British claims that they had Poland's interests uh, at, at, uh, at heart uh, were false, that since uh, in the 1920s and 30s um, the United Kingdom had practically stayed out of this part of Europe. It was only France that w was playing a diplomatical game here. Uh, so he said that uh, being this late to the party, uh, they can't be sincere. Uh, he continued writing these memos that he sent out to the Polish government, uh, saying absolutely refute all cooperation with, with the United Kingdom. Um, but uh, in the end, that's of course not what happened. Uh, Germany invaded. Uh, Studnitsky lamented that fact, but he continued to lobby for uh, closer relations between Poland and Germany anyhow. Uh, just a few weeks after the invasion, uh, he wrote a memo to uh, the German leadership uh, where he stated that a Polish government should be recreated in Poland, uh, a Polish army should be recreated, and uh, Poland and Germany should together uh, invade the Soviet Union. Uh, the Polish army would be responsible for taking the territories more or less up to Kiev and, and Minsk, uh, and they would stay behind while uh, the G German troops would march further down to the Caucasus and further east, while the Poles would be busy with uh, administrating and uh, keeping a safe, uh, that the German lo logistics uh, and supply lines could, could continue through this area of, of Western Ukraine unhindered. Uh, naturally, that didn't happen uh, in his uh, desperation in January 1940. He traveled to Berlin where he met with uh, propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels. Uh, that discussion didn't really lead to anything. Uh, instead, he was uh, interned in, in prison for a while. Uh, but uh, released after uh, Hermann Göring um, <laughs> demanded his release. Uh, 
um, he returned to Poland, uh, where he continued lobbying for uh, closer Polish-German relationships. Uh, in his defense, it has to be said that he did um, write against uh, the way that the Germans treated the civilian population in Poland. And he said that uh, you're making my job much harder than it should be uh, by the way you're acting here. I'm just going to have to interrupt you there. The clock is against us. I've had to stop Adam almost in mid-sentence. But we will be back to continue the story on the next episode of Poland Daily History. And we look forward to seeing you again then. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.